I feel like I'm going live. Am I live? I feel like I'm live. Am I living? I'm alive. Hey everybody, somebody tell me if you can hear me. Anybody? Hi, Alan Duggan says, everybody says I sound great. Hi everybody, this is Mike Myers with the Monday edition of the Mike Myers Ask Mike Anything live stream. The goal of this live stream is to provide those of us who are isolated by the coronavirus an opportunity to continue on our CompTIA studies. Now, we uh, tend to specialize more in the area of uh, A+, plus, Net+, plus, and Security+, plus, but we can certainly move outside of those areas. And we're also very much open to Tech Talk as well. Today is an interesting day because number one, today is, everybody ready? Drum roll. Brrr, it is our 100th episode. So, nobody got me confetti. This is unfair. Ah, I just wanted a little confetti, Scott. Come on, man. Um... Uh, yeah, so 100, sheer, 100 episodes of Ask Mike Anything, which just goes to show you that the COVID virus has been around a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. Uh, it's all good. We are here. We are one in the same. Uh, we got a special giveaway today, which I'm going to mention in just a moment. Uh, today is a, uh, we have no specific topic for the day. If I've made any promises, well, you, that's what you get. You, tr you screwed up. You trusted me. But uh, I do want to mention that on Wednesday, we have Dr. Don Dunkerley, who is the author of the Mike Myers uh, Security Plus Passport book, will be here. Don has, has tons of experience working in the U.S. military, civilian, she didn't wear a uniform, uh, in the uh, Huntsville, Alabama area, and uh, she'll be giving us all kinds of great information. Now, I also need to warn you, we're doing a little construction around here at Shea Myers, so uh, right now my buddies Daniel and Billy are walking around, you might see them in the background. Pay them no mind. They're okay, guys, and they're here on purpose. So don't be in a panic that strange people are walking around in the background. Just the guys setting up all these new lighting systems. I finally got some lighting here at Shea Myers. The lights are from like 1969, and I've been living in the dark for quite a while. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this room's been all lit up with new lights, and if I turned them on, my already slightly sticky uppy. Uh, COVID hairdo would make me downright have a halo. So um, trust me on that. They're doing a great job and I'm very, very excited to get all the lights in. Uh, the goal of this live stream is, as it's called, it's Ask Mike Anything. So you ask me questions and I answer them. We start at two o'clock and we run till about four o'clock or until the questions run out, whichever comes first. So definitely have your questions ready. Today is a very, very good day to do exactly that type of thing. Do keep in mind that we've got uh, Scott Jernigan always helping out as, as he always does in the background. So the trick is, is you just type in questions into the chat and I'll answer them. If I miss a question, don't get upset. Just type it again. Usually Scott Jernigan will catch it as well. So uh, we will get around to all of your questions today. Easy peasy. Um, all right. What else do we have going here? Uh, well, first of all, we've got a very interesting special today celebrating the 100th episode of Ask Mike Anything. Our special today is a free Security Plus ebook with purchase. So let me bring this up so you guys can see this. So to get a free security ebook, all you have to do is use this week's code, which is 120720. So you just head over to www.totalsem.com and load your card up with all this great loot, which is Oh, goodness, Scott, I didn't write that down. I believe it's uh, any practice questions or sims that you buy. And all you have to do is you send a receipt to Kathy Y. That's a, I got two typos in there. I'm going to fix that. To Kathy Y at totalsim.com. There we go. And uh, the subject is Mike AMA ebook offer or something halfway close to that. You don't have to be exact. And you get a free Security Plus 501 book. So how exciting is that? And thank you, Scott has already put that onto the chat window just as well. So it is a really, really great deal and you guys should definitely take advantage of that. All right, so today it's gonna be, it, it's okay, Daniel, you can run the screwdriver. Seriously, guys, we got work going on around here and I'm getting these beautiful new under counter lights put in and poor Daniel sitting there going, I gotta run the screwdriver to get Mike's lights in, but he's running an AMA. So he's running it real slow. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. All right. Um, 
anyway, so I believe that's all the important things. Did I miss anything yet today, Scott? I don't think so. Uh, we're definitely going to be doing some giveaways today of something or another. I don't know what's caught me yet, uh, but uh, definitely going to be giving away some practice questions. I know for sure. So you guys be ready. Um, as a matter of fact, I think it might be fun. Let's make Scott Jernigan do the questions today. Uh, I am still screen sharing. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Scott. And uh, so uh, the bottom line is that uh, we, we'll do some fun stuff. Scott, let's see if Scott Jernigan wants to come up with some fun questions. He may text me right back and say, you're on your own Myers, but we'll see what happens. But we'll do that here in a little bit. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and deal with some questions. Before we do that though, I want to show you guys something that's kind of cool. And I know I'm about to talk about raspberry pies again, but I can't help it. Dave Rush got me hooked on them. And you know, the first one's free, right, Dave? So uh, having run Raspberry Pis now, especially the Raspberry Pi 4s, number one, I have kicked, if you install the basic Raspberry Raspbian OS, it's a 32-bit and it's a 64-bit processor. So there is a little line I ran to kick it into 64-bit mode and it proceeded, it ran, it booted, uh, Raspbian just fine, but the moment I tried to run almost any application, all the applications are 32-bit, and uh, it was not a pretty picture. So we put that back. Anyway, uh, back to the Raspberry Pi. I bought a case because these Raspberry Pi 4s really do have a heat issue, in my opinion. And uh, so I bought a, it's a brand name. It's called uh, Flurk. Flurk, I guess, is the name. And just... Some of the most beautiful, uh, it's, it's inexpensive metal, but it's, at least it's a metal case. Look at this thing, guys. Absolutely gorgeous. And the coolest part to this, I don't know if, how well I can show this to you, but if you pop the raspberry out, it doesn't come with, you gotta bring, you gotta buy your own raspberry. But you take this out, it actually has a big chunk of metal that presses against the CPU. And, and it really does a nice job of keeping this thing cool. The box may get a little on the warm side, but it's keeping the CPU cool. And I was able to run, run it hard and it continued to work. So one more time, uh, it's called Flurk, and uh, just absolutely amazing in terms of t dealing with heat. And now granted, I don't get my fun little clear case anymore, but it looks nice, and uh, now I just got to come up with a reason, something to do with this last Raspberry Pi 4. So I know I'll come up with something, absolutely, because why not? It is my, my idiom, so we'll give that a whirl, too. All right. <laughs> Scott Jernigan just said, you're on your own, Mike Myers. So I'll be whipping up some questions here shortly. Oh, I'm dehydrated. Sorry, guys. All right, let's scroll through. What do we got going on here? The usual rogues gallery. Kevin Rathman, Red TBD3, good to see you again, man. Andre, of course, my favorite Belgian. And my favorite Belgian when I want to belch. I'm working on that joke. I'll get there eventually. Uh, Tolawut, Deepak. Uh, Alan Tolawut, of course. Oh, gosh, hey, Red TB3 passed his A+. Plus. Well done. Big round of applause to you, sir. Absolutely. Now go get a job. I know, I know. You got one already. Okay. Um, you should say y'all because it's, it's Texas. Jean Doraval is here. Oh, now Jack's going to show up? You haven't shown up for a video in a week, cat. Dr. Quinn, everybody's here. All right. Thank you, Dr. Quinn. 100 episodes of Ask Mike Anything. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, pokey hair. I know, I know. I need, I, if I, if I, I need a haircut. I need all three of them cut. I'm serious, man. It's, uh, it's getting pretty long. Oh, my goodness. Audrey O'Shea is on. This is like, Audrey, how you doing? Uh Guys, Audrey's book is coming. At, it, it's out now. Uh, hey, Audrey, do you mind if I give you a quick plug? Let me see. Let me pull this up real quick. It's on. It's Geek Girl's Guide. Let 
Geek Girl's Guide. Da -da -da. Uh, Audrey, I can't find it quickly. Audrey, uh, Audrey, do me a favor and put the, your book title up for me, would you? Oh, Girl's Guide. There we go. I'm going to put this up. Uh, Audrey O'Shea, uh, who's on right now, wrote just a wonderful book. Let me show, I want you guys to see this book. Uh, as usual, I've got everything shaped easier for me to be able to see it. Uh, I can make this better. Bear with me, guys. So this is A Geek Girl's Guide to Electronics and the Internet of Things. This is from Audrey O'Shea. This has just been out for, uh, thank you, Audrey. I apologize for getting your title incorrect. Uh, so it's out here on Amazon, and uh, it is now in stock. I did, I, Audrey, I did buy my book, and unfortunately they delivered it to my office, which I haven't been to in seven months. So I will make a special field trip just to get that book, because I'm very much looking forward to reading it. Uh, Audrey, the, for those of you who don't know her, is a Cracker Jack technician in and of herself, and other than the fact that she lives up in the cold cord north, of Northern New York is a great gal. So congratulations, Artie. It's exciting to get a new book out. I know you worked hard on it. Ooh, and uh, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to reading it myself. All right, so what else we got cooking on here? Da -da -da -ba -ba. Elbow just made it, so we're okay now. We do have one question. Uh, okay. Could you, uh, this is Mr. Meeseeks. Could you explain why using a parity space in storage spaces with an SSD is a bad idea? Mr. Meeseeks, I'm not even aware of, oh no, you're not talking about a parity space. You mean using a parity drive? Um, which is their equivalent to uh, RAID 5. I'm not familiar with that being a problem. Mr. Meeseeks, uh, why don't you develop that, for, develop that for me a little bit more and let me know why anybody would say that's a bad idea. Because I think, uh, I got to tell you, man, I've always been kind of anti-software RAID, uh, and I still am for the big heavy lifting kind of enterprise storage situations but folks i gotta tell you for this do it at home you want a raid zero or a raid one or raid five or their own proprietary the storage spaces solution by microsoft is extremely impressive and robust and more than anything else it's flexible anytime you look at a classic raid installation scenario let's say you've got uh, three, three terabyte drives. And if you want to go to RAID 5 on three three terabyte drives, that's no problem. You'll get six terabytes of storage space, right? Two of them are for the storage and one, two are striping and one is parity on a per stripe basis. But what storage spaces has that traditional RAID doesn't have is the ability to comfortably and easily support different sized drives. Now this is there, and I think it's called storage with parity. Scott Jernigan, help me out here. The, the RAID 6 equivalent on, oh goodness, I got, I've lost Scott Jernigan, there he is. The, uh, the RAID 6 equivalent of storage space is, is called, and I'm nervous, I don't want to run it on my machine right here. Um, but I always thought that was the, Striping with parity? I forget what that option's called. Anyway, the, the bottom line is, is that uh, it's not a traditional RAID. It's a proprietary RAID. And what makes it cool is like, so if I had a RAID 5 and I had two 3 terabytes and one 6 terabyte drive, I would still only get 6 terabytes of storage using a traditional RAID 5 because you have to bring all the drives down to the size of the smallest drive. That is not true with storage spaces. And we also see this with some other 
uh, raid, uh, even in the Enterprise, uh, uh, you Unify, Unify, the Unify series of uh, storage arrays, inexpensive, but these are more rack mount systems. The bottom line is through magic, and because it's proprietary, they don't have to tell you how they do it. They can take advantage of more space, and it's really cool. And look, if you're in a big enterprise environment, you know, it's really easy to go buy a bunch of six terabyte WD red stripes. But for us at home, you know, sometimes it's not real easy to get three or four plus drives that are the exact same size. And storage spaces just does an amazing job. I do not notice any kind of substantial uh, lag going with storage spaces. And I use it here at home all the time. Mainly I do uh, mirroring more than anything else. Uh, and I've been real, real happy with the results. All right, I know that didn't answer your question, Mr. Meeseeks, but I, did, I wanted to mention that while I was talking about it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, we got lots of questions in since I answered that one. Looking for questions. Audio Shea, she knows I wouldn't have a halo. I don't know. I have a kind of halo. Maven Feliciano, what happened to the other topic you were going to cover? After the router setup, you mentioned something. Maven, these are all kind of pretty easygoing sessions during these AMAs, so I don't remember. Scott Jernigan hasn't typed anything at me. So I think we're okay. Um, and it's one of these things where we can talk about anything you want. And if I forget something, we'll bring her back online. I think the last organized conversation we had was uh, last week when Dave and I were doing the uh, blocking, ad blocking with uh, Raspberry Pi and the right add-ons. So pretty sure that was the last one. Uh, 2.04 p.m., Mark Anthony clicks over. 2.05, Nadia Starr. All right, so Nadia, you know, you're the perfect type of person. You should be asking me questions, all right? I'm always glad to have topics. Keep in mind, most of the topics that I have that come up here are from your questions. And I'll just say, ooh, that's such a good topic. Let's just, instead of just answering the question, we could do something more aggressive than that. Uh, da, da, da. Deepak Plum, hi, Mike, how are you? What is the difference between WPA PSK2 and WPA CCMP? Okay, Deepak, I'm a little nervous here. First of all, I don't think it's called WPAPSK2. I think what you're saying is WPA2PSK. I think that's what you mean there. And then WPACCMP. What you're running into here is a big problem that we have um, with the understanding of the difference of WPA versus WPA2. Uh, hang on a minute. Let me. These are one of these things where I know the answer, but I'd rather just take a moment and make sure I'm not lying to you. Da -da 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 -da. Ah, okay. So basically what they're saying there is uh, CCMP is a uh, Okay, the first versions of the WPA standard still used an encryption called RC4, okay? RC4 uh, wasn't a bad encryption, but it was kind of crackable. So what they did is they came up with another version of WPA called WPA2. WPA2 uses the very powerful AES encryption. The problem with AES encryption is that, and it, AES is the standard symmetric encryption that we use on just about everything. If you're going to be uh, buying something on eBay, you're probably using AES encryption. Uh, if you're using, I, gosh, I, it's so prevalent, it's hard to come up with places where it's not used. And of course, Kerberos would be the one place where it isn't. Um, it's, it's used all over the place. The problem with AES is because it is a block mode cipher. So AES basically encrypts stuff 64 bits at a time. Boom, boom, real, real fast, but still 64 bits at a time. 
And sometimes when you have block mode ciphers like that, you can run into situations where because you're only encrypting 64 bits at a time, sometimes like if it's an image, a lot of times you can still see the image even after it's encrypted. Now the colors are changed or something like that, but the image is still there because it's only encrypting 64 bit chunks. Got the idea? So what they do with AES is they have a number of different forms of AES where you take information Man, that might be a good, I don't have the slides for that, but this might be an interesting one to talk about. Uh, so when you, you take the first piece and you pull a piece from it and then you stir it in with the key, kind of changing the key, and then you use that to encrypt the second one. Get the idea? So it's a little extra encryption. And these have all kinds of different names to it. Anyway, the one that they use in WPA2, PSK, is called CCMP, I had to look this up because I always forget. Counter mode, CCM mode protocol. Counter mode, cipher block, chaining message, authentication code protocol. Don't bother memorizing that, no one's gonna care. The bottom line is if you're using CCMP, you are using WPA2, and that's really all it means. So Mike, why would we have, and again, uh, Deepak, I'm assuming you have a typo there, and you meant WPA, to PSK and WPA2 CCMP. The danger you run into is that a lot of these uh, wireless access points are very, very flexible in how they can configure things. Cisco wireless access points are notorious for this. For example, until fairly recently, I could take a Cisco wireless access point and I could configure it as WPA2, got it? If you use WPA2, that means you are using CCMP AES encryption. That's it, that's what it means. But because Cisco controls their own chipsets, they can go in there and say WPA2 RC4. And you're like, Mike, what does that mean? The bottom line is a lot of times the people who develop the graphical front ends for the browsers for these different types of wireless access points are more interested in showing feature set than properly configuring them. And it, it is a misnomer and not something you should do. I know, isn't that crazy? I am pronouncing Deepak's name wrong. It is Deepak Poon. Do you know that, Deepak? Is Scott Jernigan pulling my leg? Uh, na, na, Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, and uh, also that uh, the Security Plus book that we're giving away today is the SY0501. And as we well know, the SY0501 is going to be good until January of 2021. When given a choice between taking a new exam or taking an old exam, while in this overlap period, you always take the old exam. Always. Nobody cares what exam you took. You will never sit. In, in a place and someone's gonna go, oh, did you take the 501 or 601? Nobody cares. They might care how many years ago you took it, but that's gonna be the same whether you took the 601 today or the 501. The important thing is that the 601 has just come out and it's already full of surprises that we haven't anticipated. And that means we're gonna have to tweak test banks and we're gonna have to tweak videos and try to get, you know, the, the book's almost done, so there's not much we can do there, but, you know, try to get a few last second changes into the book to address uh, the look and feel of the SY0601. However, the 501's been out for almost three years. We got that one dialed in. You'd never, and this isn't just for CompTIA guys, this is for literally any form of, shoot, not only IT certification, nurse certification or anything else. Never take the new exam because whoever is coming out with the new training materials has just as much knowledge as you do. And we always get these rather naughty surprises and nobody cares which one you take, ever. So take the old exam. I will get off my soapbox now. Scott, wouldn't that be kind of fun to do a, an AES? Uh, we could do an AES day. I could have swore we had one of those months ago. Uh, let me double check and make sure we didn't do AES and then the different forms of AES because I think that could be, oh, sorry, July of 2021. Scott said I said January. 
The SY0501 is good until July. That is almost seven months from now, okay? So it's, it's gonna be around for a long time. Anyway, Scott Jernigan, let, let's do a little jot down and see if maybe we could do an AES. I don't wanna do it if we've already done it. If we've already done it, we've got a video on it, I'll go back to that. But uh, understanding symmetric encryption is a critical part of uh, understanding a lot of what goes on uh, in our world um, there are certainly a number of Security Plus questions that don't, they, they kind of ask it, but not super directly, and a couple of Net Plus questions, but mainly these different forms of AES and, and stuff like that. And I've got a wonderful demonstration on it. I know I've got an amazing video on it if you watch my video series, um, but yeah. Red TB3, Mike, do you play Castle Wolfenstein on your Commodore 64? Absolutely, when I'm not playing, <laughs> I can't, Zork. Edward's in. Denis Belazorov, good Irish name there. I'm using the, um, what am I using? It's the Belkin C900 series. They're good cameras. Uh, I've got a couple of these. They do make a pretty picture. Mr. Meeseeks, uh, I love Professor Messer. I think he's a great guy. I've met him personally. Um, I think he makes wonderful products. I think I'm more fun than he is, but I think he's a great technician. And Mr. Meeseeks, in no way am I, I don't even really look at him as competition per se in that he's taking dollars from me or I'm taking dollars from him. Uh, I see that as complimentary. And anytime you're studying for any form of certification, if you can take advantage of multiple sources, that's always a very, very good thing to do. Andre's like, metal case doesn't interfere with your Wi-Fi? Nope. Maybe it did, I don't know. Now you got me nervous. Uh, I fired it up. The Wi-Fi seemed to work fine. Andre, don't know what to tell you. Edward, decided to take the SY051 at the end of January. Good man. Good luck to you. Uh, 208, Luke Butler. What's something an advancing beginner can do to learn Linux faster? Play with it more. Uh, Luke, there's no, there's no magic formula to this. Uh, you know, one of the things we did a few weeks ago is I showed everybody how to create a virtual machine. I just assume everybody has Windows systems, and uh, if I'm inaccurate, okay, uh, if, I, if I'm uh, inaccurate, then I'm sorry, but, so we, we did a, a, a couple of videos three weeks ago, that, and what we did is we installed Oracle VirtualBox to create virtual machines on our Windows system, and then got Ubuntu up and running in there. So obviously the first thing you're gonna need more than anything else, Luke, is access to Linux. And uh, in my opinion, CompTIA leans heavily towards the Debian side of things. So I would think that you know installing Ubuntu would probably be the best way to go. Uh, I mean, if you wanna do Red Hat or something else, that's your call. But the important thing is that you have it in front of you, boom. Now. You're like, okay, well, Mike, what do I do with it? Well, okay, one thing I'll tell you to do is try moving files around. You know, get a bunch of Word document files off of a thumb drive and then copy it to somewhere on your hard drive on your Linux system and practice with the CP and the MV commands to copy and move stuff around. Get comfortable with the directory structure. structure. Get comfortable with the CD command. Get comfortable with the LS command. Just dig holes and fill them back in kind of a thing. That would be the number one thing I would want to do. Then the second thing I would be doing is I would start playing with processes. So mainly using the PS command. Uh, the nice thing about the PS command is it creates a phenomenal amount of output and it has a lot of flags. And it will pipe nicely to grep. So the main reason I want to play with processes and starting and killing processes is just like in Windows, you need how to start and close programs other than just clicking an X in the upper right-hand corner. But just play with it. The, there's not a whole lot of magic to it other than you know just doing it over and over again. And using the PS command and piping it to grep. Grep is a wonderful command for filtering through a lot of output. 
and PS is notorious for just puking out all of this output on your screen and then using grep to filter out what you want to see and not see. That would be an, another one. God, what else would I do? I guess another big place I would play with is because it's on the stinking exam is you need to play with uh, the VI editor, which is awful. Uh, for me, if I'm using a text editor in Linux, I'm usually going to go with nano more than anything else because it works a lot like edit command. Uh, but um, getting some degree of comfort and at least knowing how to start VI, how to load a file and how to make some basic editing and save it because, well, it's on the exam. So you need, definitely need to know that. <coughs> but yeah, Luke, there's, no, there's nothing special to it. The other thing you might want to consider is doing projects. Um, so for example, with me, uh, Dave Rush does his Raspberry Pi uh, videos on Fridays. And you know, the Raspberry Pi runs primarily on the Raspbian operating system, which is Linux. And they're always geeking with it one way or another. So giving yourself a project, like for me, a project I gave myself was to set up, well, I've done two different things with the Raspberry Pi. I set up a home theater system and replaced a big old Windows home theater system. And then I set up a pie hole. Do I really need pie hole that bad? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's been nice. I'm not going to lie. But I was more interested in dealing with the installation and configuring of Linux. So if you want to talk about speeding stuff up, this is where things really become handy, is to be able to create practical projects and very inexpensive one. Um, a, a pie hole can be run on a very, you don't even have to need the new fancy $50 Raspberry Pi. You can use one of the older ones for less than half that price. Get them on eBay uh, or Amazon, or you can buy them locally here in Houston. And giving yourself a practical project is also the, the really the big thing to do. Oh, and the last thing I would do is practice installing stuff, getting comfortable with the APT command and, you know, just goofing with it and finding software and installing it and running it and playing with it. That would be the, those would be the big things I'd tell you you need to do, Luke. But you got to play. <laughs> Kevin Rathman at 208. It's already 230. We're one fourth of the way through already. It's hard to believe. My laptop at home is connected to a weak network. It is not mine. I am running a VPN with Norton on my computer. What more can I do? To do what? Are you trying to secure yourself? Uh, running a VPN is a good thing. Uh, when you say you're connected to the network, I guess the only other thing I would be looking at is making sure that your host firewall is, is tuned up. Um, da, 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 da. I use Windows Firewall normally, but I also don't tie into other people's stuff. Um, I think you're in pretty good shape. Uh, you know what, Kevin? Adding a, adding a router to your room would probably be a good idea because the reason the reason you'd add a NAT team router, a home router, is that. See, I don't know how you're connecting to this network. I'll assume you're connecting wirelessly, uh, and most of the Soho routers today can uh, act as a can use the wireless as a network connection. Depends on on the on the uh, router you buy, but the nice part is is that by doing that you're going to hide all of your equipment from the local network. So this buddy of mine or whoever it is, I hope it's a buddy. I hope you're not stealing off of somebody else's network. Um, they would only be able to see the front end of your router and they wouldn't be able to see anything else. So that would probably be a good thing. And I don't know how good Norton's is, uh, honestly, for... Uh, Protection setups, I find Norton to be, and it depends what Norton, there's like 20 different kinds of Norton out there, guys, so you got to pick one. Um, <laughs> we're going to make this work, Daniel. I got viewers going, what? what's he drilling back there? He's putting in some lights, dang it. I need these lights. You keep drilling, Daniel. We're all right, brother. Um, 
But uh, I, Kevin, I mean, if you're just using Norton as an anti-malware tool, honestly, the built-in Windows anti-malware is pretty darn good. Uh, that's been my opinion. I won't tell anybody. That, that's what I run 99% of the time. Uh, Red TV, how do I hook up with y'all on Discord? Uh, Red TV3, I'm sure Scott Jurgens already made the link, uh, but uh, you are welcome to... Uh, in fact, Scott, if you haven't put the Discord link, can you throw it up for us again uh, one more time? Uh, but, um, yeah, the Discord channel is great. Uh, do understand, and it's important for me to say this, Red TB3, it is not a Total Seminars Discord, okay? Uh, it is not affiliated with Total Seminars, nor is it affiliated or controlled by Mike Myers. Uh, it is, uh, it's, we have third-party private people who are working on it. Uh, they're setting up their own study times. It's my understanding, starting last week, they were starting to set this up. Uh, they need three or four, in my opinion. Again, I, I'm not in charge of this, so I don't want to get in trouble and uh, put any words in anybody's uh, mouth, but um, they probably need three or four admins who will sit there and support it for a while, especially when you don't have a lot of people at first, you know what I mean? Who are willing to show up, you know, at certain times and to give it an opportunity to build and grow. And uh, so feel free to log in. I do know that the Discord server usually gets pretty active for uh, an hour or two after I talk. So probably around four o'clock Central Standard Time uh, or if we stop a little earlier today, uh, whatever the case might be, they are going to uh, put it up there. I'm sure Scott's already got that up. And, uh, mm -mm. Brendan S., is it worth studying IT ticket system services, or should we expect to be trained on that when we are hired at a company? You're, Everybody's got different ticketing systems and you absolutely will be trained on their platform. And to be trained on somebody else's probably isn't going to be very helpful other than the fact that you have experience doing that kind of a thing. Boy, you can tell I'm behind. Andre's making hair jokes already. Ah. Uh. Oh, that's right. Lighting up IPv6. Thank you for reminding me, Scott. Um, now, we, uh, I, we can certainly do lighting up IPv6. We did one IPv6 video already a, a couple of months ago, but that was more of a what is IPv6 and, you know, wrapping our heads around it. What I wanted to do was do one that actually turns IPv6 on. Now that's assuming that you have an ISP who provides IPv6, okay? Uh, which most of them do today. But thank you very much, uh, David. I had forgotten that that is what I was gonna be talking about. Not today, I know I promised I wasn't gonna be doing it today, but uh, uh, we'll probably do that next week. Do keep in mind, did I say this already? Uh, Dr. Dawn Dunkerley is going to be on on Wednesday. Uh, she wrote the, I did mention this, uh, but uh, Dawn is not only author, as she's written multiple versions of the Mike Myers Security Plus Passport, uh, but she's a crackerjack uh, security person, and she's going to have a lot of amazing information for us. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get McGraw-Hill to give away some uh, passport books, too. Uh, and, and she's absolutely fabulous and not to be missed. Uh, she's also really good for generic security kind of questions. So it is there for you. Maven Feliciano, can you do a topic covering the kernel? Specifically the Linux kernel. Also, is there any time anyone would or even could mess with the Windows kernel or Apple? You can't mess with the Windows kernel. I mean, you really can't mess with uh, the Linux. You gotta be careful what you mean by kernel. You mean the micro kernel? Uh, oh my goodness. You want me to start building my own distros. Uh, Maven, uh, I've done that a few times. I used to do it back in the day when that was pretty much the only way you could get Linux. Uh, 
I'm, I'm afraid that not only would that be well outside the scope of any CompTIA certification, but I don't know, I don't know it well enough to be able to teach it. So you, just because I've done it a couple of times, uh, it's been 10 years since I've uh, spun up my own Win Linux version. So I'm afraid I'm gonna have to say no. And sorry, guys. I, as usual, I have I've I've got a scrolling problem. Uh, Connor Wellman, Mike. I'm looking at AWS certifications. I'm new to AWS cloud computing. Do you think it is necessary to get the AD, AWS cloud practitioner before trying for the solutions architect? Yes. The reason is, Connor, is that AWS has a lot of their own terminology for things. And you really do need that, uh, the, the cloud practitioner, not because it's that hard of a certification, it's not, but what, what makes it a challenge is it really gets you started in the very complex, in my opinion, and in some cases unnecessary complexity of their terminology, which is a big deal. Uh, so, yes. I would say you'd need that. Mr. Meeseeks finally, okay, he responded a little bit ago. I might have some things mixed up here, but I vaguely recall reading in your A plus all in one guide that parity spaces can cause earlier drive failures on SSD. Mr. Meeseeks, I don't know why I would say that. I'm not saying I didn't say it. Uh, but um, let me let me cut and paste that because I want I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do some research on that in terms of what I may have said. So let me throw up a notepad here, and I will look into that for you, sir. Audrey got tech glitched and now she's back on. Andre saying, what happened Audrey and how did you fix it? She turned it off and turned it back on again. Brandon Rogers, I tried the A plus 1002 exam and failed. Ooh, sorry buddy. Is there a reason why the multiple questions are worded very awkwardly and that there are no practice exams to provide similar language the test is made from? First of all, Brandon, I, I'm very, very sorry that you, you failed the 1002. Do keep in mind, this is not an SAT, okay? It's not an A levels or whatever it is. It's just a certification. And other than the inconvenience of time and money, nobody cares, okay? We understand because we've all failed certification exams. I fail about a third of the exams I take. So... I know it's disappointing, and I want you to know I, I, I feel your disappointment. The most important thing you can do right now is reschedule and retake it like within three months, okay? Um, that's, that's just what you got to do. You're well studied up, and if you failed, that means you, I'll bet you didn't fail by very much. Uh, I'm hoping you use my training materials. Uh, Brandon, one of the things you definitely want to do is... Uh, you really, really, really need to use my practice questions. Are, I, I'm just going to gamble that you weren't using mine or maybe just need to study harder or something. It, it happens. The national pass, the last time CompTIA gave these statistics, the national first time pass rate for CompTIA exams is 40%. It's only 40%. So you're in the majority. Uh, again, I, I, I feel your pain and frustration. Just get back on that horse, amigo, and get right back at it. Uh, and in fact, if I were you at this point, because of question wording was a challenge for you, uh, I would definitely be taking a look at not only the total seminars, practice questions, but also uh, my competitor, Robert Abernathy at Cyber Vista. She was on last, was last week, Scott, she was on? Anyway, she still has a half price special, which I'm very confident is still good. And it gives you an opportunity to get two different sets of questions. Look, I'm not trying to spend your money. Well, I am, but that's not my goal. 
you have now run straight into uh, the problem that we have with these uh, questions is that all questions have a voice. And you have, if you only use one set of practice questions, you can often get stuck just hearing that one writer of the question's voice. Even if you use just my practice questions, you run into this issue. Having a second set of questions. Um, okay. Um, yes. Uh, sorry, I, I'm slightly distracted with uh, Scott texting me in here. Uh, last Wednesday, yes for Robin. So uh, go back to the Robin Abernathy video and uh, it's right towards the end, like in the last 10 minutes of the, of the video while she's still on it, uh, the offer came up. And you have to go over to Cyber Vista and you get it half off. It's crazy, crazy prices. I'm surprised I don't have a million people in here with these deals we give away. But get back at it, man. Just, just do it again, Brandon, and let us know how you did, brother. Jean, Jean Dorival, anyone know a decent video editing software that is free? Uh, Jean, if somebody hasn't answered you already, I don't know. Da Vinci Resolve. There you go. Scott Jurgen was right on top of that. Okay, here it is. Mr. Meeseeks looked it up. Oh, God. Here it is. With parity spaces, on the other hand, the nature of how SSDs work might cause premature failure. It is best to use HDDs with parity. Mr. Meeseeks, I apologize. I'm going to have to look that one up, and there's no way for me to look it up while we're talking. Um, I, I'm going to look it up. You may have caught a change in attitude, or I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to just read you know, the two paragraphs before and the paragraph after, uh, but we will have an answer to that. Scott Jernigan, here, I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. Mr. Meeseeks, look at me. Parody spaces. You got it, man. I, I, I'm going to check that out, Mr. Meeseeks, and uh, I'll have an answer to you by Wednesday, day after tomorrow, guaranteed. Andre still talking about my hair? Uh, Tolowitz in the news here. Starting today, Google Nest speakers like the new Nest Audio, Nest Hub Max, and Nest Mini will now have access to Apple Music. Dun, 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 dun. That's, that's, uh, that's very cool. But it's not that hard for them to do it. I'm glad to see they're doing it, though. 217, Audrey O'Shea. Are you seeing any mini ITX used in business yet or just in the home market? I see mini ITX used all over the place. I see them used as uh, process controllers. I see mini ITX used... Uh, in uh, point-of-sale systems. Uh, the U.S. military uses uh, ruggedized mini-ITXs in certain types of aircraft and uh, military vehicles. Uh, mini-ITX is very, very popular, Audrey. Uh, in fact, I would say I don't run into much mini-ITX these days in the home market. Not like I used to. I mean, they're out, they're out there. They are absolutely out there. Uh, I, I just don't see them as big as they used to be. Nadia Star, thanks Mike, I'm learning a lot. As I go further, so much to learn, that's why I want to go in the IT world. You never stop learning, you, you cannot stop learning. Uh, Nadia, if you get a chance, uh, do a YouTube search for Mike Myers' 10 Commandments. Uh, it's a great video I did about 10 years ago and it is still absolutely true as it was back then and uh, it talks about uh, among other things like hugging jocks watch the video it'll make sense uh, it also talks about the learning paths of uh, IT and it's called um, Mike Myers Ten Commandments there's about four or five uh, mirrors of it all over the place uh, 224 Lino Del Core. I'm having trouble locating exam centers for Network Plus around the New York City area. Sites I've visited are unclear. Uh, Lino or Lino, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name right. Probably the best thing to be doing right now is that uh, OnView provides uh, the ability for you to take the test at home. Yep. Uh, you need some uh, 
you need uh, there's a number of requirements. Uh, I'm going to let Scott, if he hasn't already, bring the link up for you. Uh, but go ahead and check it out, and you can literally take it at home. Don't even bother with the testing centers. You know, it's the exact same test that they give at the testing centers. Uh, you have to have a camera. You have to have a halfway decent internet connection. Uh, there are some other restrictions. We've had a lot of people take it at home, and they've been real happy with it. Uh, there are some rules, or you can't have posters in the back that have information on them, stuff like that. I'll let you look at that, and we'll let Scott do a search. It's onview.com. Oh, heck, why make poor Scott do it? I'm going to check for myself. Okay, well, I know OnView will get you there. So, onvue.com and uh, check it out for how to take CompTIA exams at home. Thank you, Scott. And Scott's got it posted in chat as well. I'll bet he did a long time ago. Deepak Poon. Now, is it really Poon or is it Pun? Uh, Mike, you now know Scott Jernigan and me are macaholic best friends forever. Even our hair looks exactly the same, curly. Well, you know. Oh, elbow, I'm sitting on a soapbox. Dude, I'm only 5'6". You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting on one. Project Draven passed the core two today, so I'm, you are A+. Plus. Big round of applause to Project Draven. Well done, sir. Congratulations. Simon Edlin, 226. How far behind? I'm not that far. I'm only 20 minutes behind. That's not bad for me. Hi, Mike. Super excited to start my career in IT. Well, Simon, this is the best place to start, buddy. And stick around. I'm going to be giving some stuff away here uh, in about 10 more minutes. And uh, so we'll help you get some free stuff to get you on your way. We're going to be giving away practice questions today. David Rush. Me and David Rush are the only people who remember Zork. All right, so Scott Jernigan, yeah, guys, we do not have to do an AES. Um, so uh, we did do an AES back in the day. Uh, I don't remember. It was like back in July. So there's no reason for us to repeat it. It's a great episode. really goes into the different forms of AES. You're going to absolutely love it. Audrey O'Shea is into VR. Mike, I'm hooked on Beat Saber these days. Is that like Dance Dance Evolution or something, Audrey? I don't... Uh... Oh, Frank, Frank chimed in. Yes, Frank, Cypher Modes. God bless it. Me and my vocabulary. Um, there are different... Uh, yes, they absolutely do work on uh, AES. And uh, there, there's a number of different types of modes. And we covered that back in July. Uh, a question about CCMP does come up on the Network Plus that refers to it. And there's also a couple of questions on Security Plus. And God bless it, I could not remember Cypher Mode. Frankie, Frank, Frankie? He used to have a buddy named Frankie. Uh, Frank, thank you for putting that up in the chat to help me remember. And it absolutely does work on AES. Ryan Fingston. Fingston? Is it possible to get a job with exclusively an A-plus certification? I do not have a degree or any official background in IT. You absolutely can get a job. Uh, I'm always surprised. Like here in the Houston area, here in the middle of the COVID troubles and everything, we have a number of people who are hiring. Um, you know, it, you may be starting at, you know, $14 an hour, but you'll move up quickly. It's, it's, you won't sit there very long. Um, a lot of them are sales jobs, which is not the worst place to start. Everybody's like, I don't want to do sales. Well, you got to keep in mind, you really have to know. I think salespeople have to know product better than anybody else, especially in terms of impact to the customer and that kind of thing. Uh, the ability for somebody to walk in and go, I need a laptop. And you have to get there and go, okay, what are you doing with the laptop? That kind of stuff. Um, you absolutely can get a job with just A-plus certification. To be honest with you, um, tell you the truth, Ryan, you can get a job without A-plus certification. What you need, more than anything else, is bilateral symmetry, which I'm assuming you got. Uh, number two, you, you need uh, enthusiasm. Uh, three, you need passion. And four, you need dependability. And five, you need to be able to, you know, clap rhythmically. It's not that hard to get 
entry level jobs. Certainly here in the Houston, Texas area, I could absolutely vouch for that. Um, you are not going to get a job with A plus certification. Okay, the all the only thing that certification does is it puts your name at the top of a stack of resumes. That's it. So. I, I always worry, Ryan, and I'm not saying this is you, but I run into people like this who are going to say, well, I'm going to go get an A plus and an F plus and a security plus, And then with all that, I'm going to go get a job. Nope. Doesn't work that way, man. Entry level is entry level. And uh, those certifications help you get jump started in. They get you past the human resources. They get you straight to the technical interview, but they're not going to give you a job. Okay. So don't, don't think like that. Not a good idea. Uh, just go out there and get some work. Scott Jernigan doesn't like VI. Neither do I. Yeah, and uh, Luke, the other thing is, is come back here, okay? You know, do, some, do something on Linux that's fun and tell us about it. Shoot, if you got a good enough project, I'll put you up in a Zoom meeting. We can show everybody. I'm, I should be doing more of that anyway. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the secret is, is, especially during these COVID times, is you're, you're not alone, okay? And this is just one of many, many venues that I think you should be taking care of to get some fellowship with fellow nerds and uh, come on back, come up with some ideas. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll sweeten the pot for you. And if you come back and go, I don't have any ideas of what to do. I assure you that between me and Dave Rush and Scott Jernigan and a couple of these other rogues, uh, we can come up with fun projects for you to do on Linux uh, once a week and not even blink. Three D printing usage. My problem with three D printing is three D printers are really really cool things, and every three D printer in every nerd's home I've ever been to, it just sits there. They went and they printed a picture of a bunny. They printed a sculpture of a bunny, and then they just don't do anything with it. So I think three D printing is very cool. I love the technology. I just don't see anybody using it enough. I you know, somebody wants to go in, uh, if I could get five people to go in and get a good 3D printer, you know, and you know, spend five, six grand on a good 3D printer, uh, I'll be glad to keep it for everybody and I'll print their stuff for them. <laughs> I just can't rationalize. They're, they're so cool, but then nobody really does anything with it. Patricia Grace, did Mike say bilateral symmetry? Yes, Patricia, I'm just joking. A little humor. Trisha, you're so serious. So serious. Be okay, now I I will now look up Beat Saber because you guys have shamed me. Beat Saber. Oh, it really is like Dance Dance Revolution. Got to look up Beat Saber because I didn't know what it was. All right, so I swing around a red to blue lightsaber and smacking things. Yeah. No. Okay. Sorry, guys. Not my kind of game. To me, the most fun thing to do with a VR system is uh, when we set ours up, the, three years ago, right, Scott? Or not about two years ago, uh, when we set ours up, and uh, I just got to use Google Earth and uh, started out in Manhattan and just went Superman mode, and uh, it was a hoot. And just fly it around, and I get vertigo, so I'd be sitting here flying through Manhattan, and all of a sudden I go, 
let's go up 100 miles. I was like, Wah! <laughs> the realism is amazing. I won't deny that at all. Frank, thanks, Mike. Pass net plus on Thursday. Good man. Way to go, Frank. Round of applause. Let's do that properly. Uh, Edwin, does CompTIA ask a lot of questions about subnetting on the net on the net plus? No, it doesn't. And the few that it asks are ridiculously easy. I, I'll tell you, uh, this is one place where Scott Jernigan and I get into fist fights. Scott and McGraw Hill. I don't want to put this all on Scott. They're like, well, we have to cover every single objective on a CompTIA exam. And I'm like, no, nah, we don't have to. In my opinion, I would rather just skip subnetting, especially IPv4 subnetting, because it's not that it isn't an important topic. It is an important topic, but it's more of an ISP thing than a end user kind of a thing. Even in a, a you have to get a pretty large enterprise until you, before you start subnetting in-house. And, uh, you know, most of the questions are, you start with this subnet, and <clears throat> I need to have subnets that support, you know, at least six people per, how many network IDs can I generate from it? That's really all it asks. And uh, I'd just be tempted just to skip it. So, like when I took my driver's test a million years ago, uh, I just skipped the parallel parking. <laughs> my mom owned a huge, it was called a Fury, and it was this, it was a, like a car and a half long, and uh, there was no way I was ever going to parallel park that one. And I figured out when I was looking at the Missouri uh, driver's test that I, if I do well on everything else, I could just skip the parallel parking, still get a driver's license. And, uh, you know, remember the thing for me with uh, any type of certification that I train for is D for diploma. Nobody really cares what your scores are. And uh, that's my opinion. Looking for questions. Well, it's three o'clock, so let's go ahead and uh, symmetricalist. Oh, Patricia, you're hilarious. Uh, yeah, look at me. Oh, here's, here's me and Dave Rush are disagreeing. He says there's a lot of questions. Five questions. I never got five. Did Jack walk past? No, we've got, we have spare cats laying around here as well. Let's go ahead and have a competition. What do you say? Let's do a quick competition for some practice questions. What should I do? A plus, net plus, or security plus questions? Trying to decide. Give me a second, guys. Yeah. Digging up a question. All right, guys, so here we go. We are about to do a competition. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going through the Mike Myers uh, Total Tester A Plus uh, test bank, and I'm going to grab some arbitrary questions and what I need you guys to do is answer them. Now, the thing I need to stress to you, a lot of these are multiple choice questions, okay? And since they're multiple choice questions, it's kind of tricky for me to just hand you all of that. So what I'm gonna do instead, oh, actually, I got a great way to handle this. I can just put this up on the screen, can't I? I don't even have to ask anybody. Is that going to work? Yeah, hang on a minute. All right. So let's go ahead and here's our first question. No, I'm not going to do this. This question's stinky. Let me do a better question. Boop. 
Why don't you? Oh, I do know the answer to this one. Let's do this question. You guys ready? Here we go. This is the one. You have to r write out the word. Don't type A, B, C, or D. Which program is the best choice to use to clear the SSL cache? Oh, good Lord. Edwin, you only have to type it once. All right, all right. <laughs> all right. Edwin, you're the winner. Congratulations to you, sir. Edwin, you win your choice of either the A plus, Net plus, or Security plus questions. Come on, guys. Edwin typed the letter and then typed Internet Explorer faster than anybody else. So, Edwin, congratulations to you. Well done. Uh, Edwin, in order, to re uh, in order to get your prize, all you have to do is send an email to Kathy Y at totalsem.com. Is her email still up? Nope, I took it down. It's Kathy Y, K A T H Y Y at totalsem.com. Tell her you're one of the winners for today and tell her which one you want, either the A plus, Net plus, or Security plus, and you get 180 day access to the practice questions. All right, that was fun. Want to do it again? I want to do it again. That was fun. You guys ready? So I'm going to give me a second to come up with a question I like. Eh. Ooh, this is a good question. I like this one. You guys ready? All right, so in this case, all you, you can't just type the letter because Tolowit and those guys are going to... Wait a minute. Edwin. All right, hold on. Edwin's giving it away. Here we go again, doing this again. All right. I've got to find the other winner. Edwin, Edwin. <laughs> Okay, so the problem we have here, guys, is all of the usual suspects. So the next winner would be Elbow. And let me guess, Elbow, you're not going to want it either, right? Oh, hang on, i got to give Elbow a chance to answer. Elbow, you were the winner of the previous one because Edwin is giving it away. Elbow, would you like to have a shot at this? Elbow isn't typing. Okay, I don't know where Elbow's gone. So who's the next one? BVP. Edwin? Uh, Deepak was the next one. All right, so sorry. Yeah, Elbow, what, he just typed the answer and ran? Okay, so uh, Deepak is the next one. Deepak, do you want it? Deepak, you're the winner, buddy. All right, I'm pretty sure Deepak is prop. There we go. Okay, Deepak, congratulations to you, sir. You know how this works, buddy. Just go ahead and send Kathy Y at Total Sem an email. All right. We got a lot of new people on today, guys. So all you ringers, I know I can't give it away today. It's crazy. All you ringers, I want you to just sit back. If you know you're not going to take it, I know you want to compete for fun, and I appreciate that. But on this one, let's let the new guys and gals have a shot at it. You guys ready? Here comes the next question. The first person, and you can just, you have to type the whole thing out because otherwise people are just going to type A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Okay? So whoever types it out first uh, wins. You don't have to type it out perfectly just so I know what you're trying to say. You get it? These competitions are not fair, people. All right? It's my call. Yeah. All right, here we go. Thank you, Scott Jernigan. Okay, here we go. Yes, Deepak, stay back. Yeah, Andre, stay back. Yeah, Tolowit, you too. We got, we got a number of new people. I want them to have a shot at this. All right, so here we go. The next question is... Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Which of the following devices is probably the safest and easiest to hot swap on a PC? You got to type it out. Can't just type in a letter. You're hilarious, Tolowit. Tony Healy is the winner. The USB camera, absolutely. Uh, it, it is certainly the USB camera, and it's not the hard drive. 
USB hard drives do a pretty good job uh, of uh, making sure that their right back caches are cleared before you unplug them. Uh, but a USB camera, it doesn't have any data on it. So if you were to just unplug it as opposed to doing a proper disconnect this device, uh, you, you have, you're, you're going to be the safest. So uh, also uh, modular CD-ROM drive. I don't even know what that means. A mini PCI NIC. Don't want to pull things out of a PCI connector. And a PS2 mouse. You cannot unplug PS2s. If you unplug anything that's PS2, it will usually lock the system up. So who was it again? Tony Healy. Tony Healy. Isn't that the guy from... Uh, what is that? I Dream of Genie? The old 60s sitcom? All right. Anyway, so Tony, congratulations to you, sir. Uh, you are going to, uh, you are the winner of the uh, Major Healy. That's what I thought. Thank you. I was Major Healy. Uh, congratulations to you, Tony. You are the winner. Uh, in order to claim your prize, just send an email to Kathy Y at totalsim.com. Tell her you're a winner today and tell her whether you want A plus, net plus, or security plus practice questions. And they're yours. So congratulations. Dave Rush, he passed away this year. How, how, do, you, how do you know these things? All right. How are we doing on time? All right. It looks like, guys, if you have questions, this is the time to do it. If I don't have any more questions, we're probably going to slow down and we'll have a short day today, which is fine. I just want to make sure I'm getting all the questions covered. Uh, we are going to do one more uh, practice, well, one more competition question. Oh, this is such a CompTIA question. This is such a CompTIA question. Okay. You guys ready for the third one? Again, if you've already won, be a nice person and hold back. Let, let the new folks, we've got a lot of new faces on here. Uh, so, Somali, hang on, Somali's got a question. Here we go, here we go. What am I missing on Teams? Okay, Deepak, I'm gonna answer your, let, let me go ahead. We've got two questions I wanna get answered real quick. All right. From uh, my buddy Deepak Poon. I've been saying Deepak Pun, but Scott Jernigan informs me the proper pronunciation of your name is Deepak Poon, so that's what I'm going to do. Thanks, Mike. Are there other uh, components other than CPU, RAM, and power supply unit that could have overheating issues? Would you suggest an actual monitor or just a TV for second or third monitors? All right, so you got two questions here. Um, uh, CPU and RAM are definitely going to be the canaries in the coal mine that are going to warn you about gen general overheating issues overall in a system. Um, keep in mind when you say that a CPU has overheating issues, CPUs rarely have overheating issues. It's the cooling system that cools your CPU that usually has the overheating issues. And so to me, I'm going to be looking at, if I have an overheating system, the first thing I'm going to be looking at every time is how is my cooling system working? If it's a desktop system, I'm going to be, uh, I want to look at my fans. I want to look at my temperature monitors. If I don't have temperature monitors, sticking my hand in there and feeling things that might be hot. Being careful doing that because you can, uh, you never want to touch a CPU that's under process because that will really be hot. It's like grabbing a 100 watt light bulb. Uh, but uh, the big thing is more than anything else is, uh, are, are the fans turning? Do I have anything that's blocking cooling? Have I done anything recently that's changed it that might be blocking? Uh, I've seen good desktop systems with great cooling that are slid into these groovy desks, these little confined spaces and there's no air movement and you get overheating issues. So that, that would be the first thing I would look at more than anything else. Second question, would you suggest an actual monitor or just a TV for second or third monitors? Uh, I live on very high quality, identical, absolutely identical twins monitors. Uh, I like duals. I don't do triples. That never made any sense to me. It's a matter of personal choice. Uh, with identical dual monitors, being able to drag windows from one monitor to the other, it doesn't go from this to this, and then back when you hit the other one, you got your resolutions the same, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
there's nothing wrong with using a TV as a second monitor as long as you realize, first of all, today's TVs are just monitors with a TV tuner built in. They're monitors. So if you're going for different size monitors and or different resolution monitors, that can be very disconcerting. So usually people have different size monitors will leave certain programs on certain monitors and they won't drag them back and forth. Me, I'm constantly moving stuff around and that's why like I'm running dual Acer 27 inch 4K IPS monitors right now. Not as expensive as you'd think. Uh, and that, that's a matter of personal choice for me. Uh, there was another question. Uh, Somali, what is an API? API stands for Application Programmer's Interface. Everything that's out there in terms of software, uh, certainly drivers, uh, applications, and operating systems, all want you to be able to talk to them via software. And API is an interface which allows you to communicate through programming, through code, to these different types of devices. Uh, without APIs, cool things like add-ons for Firefox wouldn't exist. Uh, <laughs> without APIs, operating systems almost wouldn't function because it's, it allows APIs to do cut and paste, for example. For, for you able to be, you know, you have a copy of Word and a copy of PowerPoint open and you can cut some text from Word and then paste into PowerPoint is because of APIs. APIs provide extra functionality to whoever needs it on either the end of the API that's being provided or the application that's taking advantage of the API. So API is a way to talk to other stuff programmatically and it is what makes computing beautiful, man. Uh, Patricia Grace at 313, using scanned email features on a network printer to email, using scan to email features on a network printer. I'm not sure what that means. Why would you, why wouldn't you be able to scan to the sent from email? It works with my other me email, but it won't work. I'm not sure. Patricia, what do you mean by scan? I'm, I'm not Patricia, I'm going to ignore that and let you rewrite that question for me because I'm not quite sure what you're asking for. Uh, Tolowit, are there really that many PSU peripherals still in use out there? Yes, Tolowit, they're super popular right now. Most hardcore gamers consider PS2 ports to be far more sensitive than USB ports. And the real high-end gamer motherboards today all have PS2 ports on them, mainly for the mouse although sometimes you'll see two of them. Yeah, Edwin answered the question, it's for gamers. And Andre asked, answered it too. Look, look at me, man. Matt H, got the A plus task last week. Congratulations, big round of applause to you, Matt H. Well done, sir. Now what are you gonna do, Matt? That's always the big question. 782 on core two, that's great. Thought it was much easier than core one, where I only got 680-ish. Matt, most people consider the core two to be more difficult than the uh, core one, so congratulations to you. Well done, sir. Hey, Luke, do me a favor. If you're talking to other folks, use that at sign, because otherwise I'm watching for it, buddy. I see y'all are talking about mining. Uh, Edwin, off topic. It's not off topic, Edwin. This is totally on topic. With a 40-hour job, how many hours study a day is healthy? <laughs> Everybody's different, Edwin. Uh, if you're working for a living, to me, most studying is going to be done on the weekends and uh, a little bit in the evenings. It's a matter of personal choice. I'm the kind of person who can do a couple hours a night in the evenings, and I'm fine with that. Your mileage may vary. Dave Rush, that's right, they never ask your score. Zerksik is a minor. Uh, 
Tony Healy, once you pass, what all does it take for you to keep a certification? Okay, almost all IT certifications are now on a roughly three year cycle, Tony. And uh, all certifying bodies have different ways to do it. Now, if you're talking about CompTIA, uh, CompTIA, if they had their way, you'd retake the test every three years. However, they do provide a number of CEU options. Uh, there's a broad number of different options in there. I recommend you go to www dot comptia dot org and check out their CEU section. They go in a lot of detail about what you can do. The other thing I'm going to tell you though is in my opinion, unless your job is directly affected by that certification, I think that most people should move on past certificate, uh, whatever certification you've done before and not retake them. I would rather see you move into more advanced security certifications or move into Cisco or move into cloud or move into Microsoft, which is also basically cloud now and pursue more complicated and more aggressive, more learned certifications and not necessarily worry about re-upping. Now, if you're in a job, I mean, if you're sitting here working at a mom and pop PC repair company, sure. In that case, I could certainly see why you'd want to keep your certifications up to date. But in general, I like to see people moving upward and onward. Again, Tony, I recommend do a search on YouTube for Mike Myers, 10 Commandments. Uh, it's a video I did about 10 years ago. It's still great. Uh, it really talks about, well, a lot of things. And that is one of the topics it covers. Emmanuel. When is the last month to take the A-plus test? Scott, have they even announced a new A-plus? I don't think so. No. Uh, Emmanuel, you, you have, they haven't even announced a new A-plus exam. Uh, I'm not sure why you're asking that question, my friend. The current A-plus exams are the 220-1001 uh, and 220-1002. And uh, they'll be good for at least the next year and a half. So yeah, the, my study materials are, are for that one. And yeah, unbearable suffering. Have you ever been hacked? I've been hacked a bazillion times. A lot of times I wanted to be hacked. Uh, now the next question I have for you, unbearable, is what do you mean by hack, dude? Because that can have a lot of variance in there. Oh, I did miss another question from Tech, tech Discipline. Hey Mike, what security cameras do you recommend? Not Chinese cams that collect data, no internet cams. Uh, I use the Amcrest brand. And uh, the Amcrest AMCREST. I, I believe they're still Chinese made, but they also have both wireless and RJ45 connections. Uh, they're great cameras. They're inexpensive for what you get. Uh, they have built-in monitoring software. I think there's better softwares out there, but <laughs> oh, there it goes. And uh, yeah, Amcrest brand are some great ones. They're doing 4K cameras already, which personally I think is a waste for a surveillance cam. I mean, unless you're doing telephoto or something crazy like that. Sub hundred dollars per cam. Very good cameras. Uh, IT Learner Jill. Hey, IT Learner Jill. Good to see you again, Amiga. My, my imposter syndrome, very common. Do you still experience it or still have moments of doubt in yourself? All the time. <coughs> I always have it. I mean, you know, shoot, you guys do it to me right here. Just getting on here and Mr. Meeseeks is telling me I put something really weird into my book. And I'm all nervous about this parody spaces thing. I'm going to have to look this up. So, yeah. It happens. The one thing I will tell you, IT Learner Jill, more than anything else, is that it doesn't take much learning on your part before you're way ahead of the crowd. Not much at all. And you will be shocked. Like anybody who even has an A-plus certification, they have a skill level that I can count on and they're going to be way ahead of most other folks. So go for it. The other thing I will tell you about uh, that is that what's more important to me than imposter syndrome 
is what I call experience management. And that is, like if I'm gonna work on your system, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is, do you understand that by me working on this system, I could wipe your hard drive? Do you know that? I, the chances of, me ha of that happening are really, really small, but it could happen. So if I'm working on somebody's system, Number one, I'm gonna make sure they have a backup. Now I'm not talking about a big rigorous backup. Uh, what gets people in trouble on their home systems is their pictures and their videos and their, their documents, which are usually stored in my documents or my videos or something like that. That's the first thing. The second thing that gets them in trouble are their applications because they usually don't remember where they installed the applications from. They don't have the original installation media, whatever that might be. And the number three thing that gets most people in trouble is that they've never documented the Windows CD key. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't tell you how important it is to make sure that you have the CD key for your system. Windows comes pre-installed on so many people's systems now. And if you ever have a problem where the system gets wiped, and you have to reinstall Windows, if you don't have the CD key, baby, you're gonna pay another 99 bucks to get another copy of Windows. And uh, you need to grab the CD key. There's a thousand utilities out there. You know, just go on Google, do Windows CD key utility. There's a billion out there. And just write it down. Just write down the CD key. So important. You can get a new copy of the installation media from Windows, uh, from Microsoft. You don't even need your installation media. Oh, well, it's, it's convenient to have it ready to go, but Windows 10 updates so often that I don't know how smart of an idea that is anymore. But you gotta have the key, gotta have the key. So expectations management tells me that I need to make sure that these backups are done before I do anything. And I'm like, if you wanna pay me to do backups, I am, you know, $45 an hour. Boy, that's where your imposter syndrome kicks in, IT the general. The first time you look at somebody in the eye and go, it's $45 an hour. Because the next thing they're gonna do is they're gonna go, ah, okay. And you're like, wow, I'm getting money for something I love, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, understand that if you, if you have an A-plus certification level of skill, you're way ahead of the crowd and uh, be fearless. Man, especially if you're working for somebody else, you know? I mean, you don't stick a fork in the toaster kind of a thing, you know what I mean? But all good techs make mistakes. We all make mistakes. And as long as you can restore from backup, you're okay. So don't worry about that, IT Learner Jill, and welcome to the crowd. I really am gonna do at least one more uh, competition here. God, you guys are so fast at answering everybody. I'm, I'm just gonna assume they've got it. Yes, Deepak, uh, when you take the test, they hand you a piece of paper. Or if you take it at home, I think it comes as a PDF. Uh, Matt H. Hi, Mike. What's the current state of play for the Network Plus? What series are we on and when's the new series? I'm going blank. Scott. Yes, thank you. Oh, good old Scott Jernigan. Uh, number one, uh, Emmanuel, you were asking about the current A Plus doesn't expire until summer of 2022. So you got, yeah, I, I guess pretty, about a year and a half. The current Net Plus is the N10007 and it's probably good through the fall of 2021. We have been notified by CompTIA that there is a Net Plus update coming along. We will get it way before you guys do. We have to sign our lives away. and We get it before you guys do so we can develop training materials. Uh, but that's, you know, a year in the future before it even comes out. And again, there'll always be an overlap too. Thirty thirty PTZ cameras point at the neighbor's yard. I actually run three PTZ cameras. 
One's in the front of the house, looking down on my front door. I've got, oh, PTZ, point, tilt, and zoom, okay? It's the cameras that go, ju, 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 ju. Uh, which to me, I guess if I had a fixed camera on my front door, that wouldn't be so bad. <clears throat> uh, but uh, one at the front door, one inside my garage. I have another one that I have sitting around as test, and I'm probably going to put one. Uh, I have an alley in my backyard, uh, and, and my back house, little courtyard, garage, and then alley. Uh, so you can't get to the alley except by going through the garage. Got it? And uh, I want to put one outside there that can look up and down the alley. That's the other thing about these Amcrest cameras that I like. They almost all come with infrared built in so they can see in the dark. You don't need lights. Which is another thing to add, which is a pain in the rear end. Yeah, lots of at signs going here, which is fine, which is fine. Let's see, I'm just looking to make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, I'm serious, guys. It, it's so frustrating. And if I'm working on somebody's machine, if they don't have the CD key, uh, here, let me pull it. I haven't looked lately. Windows 10 CD key utility. Yeah, there, ah, there's a bunch of these. I'm, I'm not even going to pick one. It always surprises me that Windows doesn't have that built in. So I did a quick search here, guys, and found uh, a bunch. Bell Arc Advisor, Ablesoft. I don't know any of these. Windows product. I think I've used this one. The Windows product key viewer. And uh, works on anything from Windows 95 to Windows 10. That's... Uh, here, I've actually used this one, so I'll, whoops, let me throw a link in here for you guys to look at. You guys can check that out as one of many. I'm not going to recommend one over the other. It just pulls up a key. Yeah, one of these days, Windows is going to get smart, and they're going to put the CD key where it's findable. And I'll bet you there's, there's probably some CLI to pull up the Windows CD key. God, now I'm really curious. So I'm actually looking on uh, the Microsoft support and they don't tell you. They say it's included on the certificate of authenticity attached to the PC. Get one of these utilities. I, I keep one on a thumb drive at all times. Yes, Deepak, when you take the test, you, so you take the test and it says, are you done? You're like, end test. You click a button that says, end test. And then it makes you go through a, what do you call it? What's your age? Are you male, female? Level of, uh, they make you take a survey. Just so irritating because you've just finished the exam and you don't want, <laughs> it's like making you take a survey. It's so frustrating. I, I think the last one is no answer, no answer, no answer, no answer, no answer, no answer. And then after you take the survey, then it puts up and it says pass or fail, boom. And then it does break it down in a lot of detail in terms of uh, what, where you need to study. It's very frustrating to put a survey at the end of an exam like that. That's Daniel. Andre has, has a uh, VBS file. There you go. So, Andre, you're using a little uh, 
basic script file to pull the CD key. Uh, Andre, why don't you give us a link to that file? I'd love to see it. That gives us a reason to run PowerShell, right? We were talking about wanting to run PowerShell and having a reason to do it. Somebody hands you a VBS script. You need PowerShell to run VBS scripts, right? There you go. Speaking of Windows, is BitLocker a secure full disk encryption? Yes, uh, BitLocker is great. Uh, TPM is now pretty common on pretty much all systems. Uh, certainly, I don't think I've run into a laptop without TPM in a while. Uh, you really need, uh, don't ask me what TPM, trusted, Scott Jernigan, save me. What does TPM stand for? Trusted platform module. PTZ is pan tilt zoom. <laughs> PTZ is, I don't care what Scott Jernigan says. He says it's pan tilt zoom, it's point. It's pan, thank you, Scott. Uh, so uh, yeah, BitLocker is amazing. Um, in fact, uh, BitLocker is still an encryption that uh, even here in the United States, federal law enforcement does not have a way to crack BitLocker. Uh, so they'll, they do other clever things. Trusted platform module, module, thank you, Scott, TPM. So the only trick is the first time you run BitLocker and you fire it up and it's gonna, it's, it's uh, I keep wanting to say, I'm such an old fashioned guy. It's under control panel. It's under, it is under system. And uh, just make sure if it says TPM module not present, Usually all you have to do is go into your, into your CMOS setup and turn it on. So yeah, works good. I don't use it. Uh, the reason I don't use it is very simple. I had a system that I did a Windows upgrade on. This is a Windows 8 upgrade, okay? And because there was hardware incompatibility, I was, I basically lost a lot of data that I didn't have backed up on the drive because there was no way for me to easily restore to an earlier version of Windows because the old, the new version of Windows started corrupting things. Um, now, it's not to say I wouldn't use BitLocker on an external drive or something like that, but I don't like to BitLocker that which I boot from. So, something to keep in mind. Uh, Deepak, you're right. Hyper-V only comes with Pro. The Zerk 678, how do you run Ethernet that far for the camera? I, it's, a, it's an Ethernet uh, gigabit device, so I can run uh, up to 90 meters. So I run a cable. Now, keep in mind, my house is wired for Ethernet. I had done major remodeling about seven or eight years ago, and I basically had no walls in my house. And before I put the walls back, I intentionally ran uh, Cat6 uh, cabling all over my house. So I, I got that going for me. Uh, but uh, these Amcrest cameras also work just fine wirelessly. For example, I do not have Ethernet going back to my garage. And in that case, it just uses wireless. They work fine either way. It's no problem. Yeah, but Somali, you don't want to run Hyper-V. Don't run Hyper-V, run Orica, Oracle VirtualBox. It's free, it does the same thing, and in my opinion, it's not as intrusive. Oracle VirtualBox, it's completely free. We did some videos on how to get it and install it and everything. Emmanuel, my book is always sold out on Amazon? No. Which book? I have a hard time believing that. Ooh, waterfall guy 59 actually is that is did you guys see that 
First of all, waterfall guy, I don't recognize your name, but welcome aboard. I am going to try your little piece of code. Hang on. Do you guys see that at uh, 3.34 p.m., Waterfall Guy 59 gave us a little piece of code? I knew there was one. Waterfall Guy 59, you rock. You absolutely rock. You are amazing. You are assembled from the parts of lesser nerds. Guys, you don't even need to download a utility. I'm totally going to steal this from you. Waterfall Guy 59. WMIC space path, space software licensing service, space git, blah, 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 all this goo. Uh, I'm going to put it back on the screen. God, what a fuck, I fit you. I'm going to, we will sing songs of you around the fires. That was perfect. Man, thank you so much. That is wonderful. <laughs> Aaron, even Eric State's coming in. So we had a few people who knew this. See, I knew there was a command line for that. Thank you, Eric. Thank you guys, really appreciate it. Excellent. Even Deepak came in there. Did you guys just do a bunch of Googling while I was talking about that? Uh, the Xerxic 78, no, isn't that, that's on the Windows system panel. I don't think it shows up there. Now you got, now you're gonna make me look. On the Windows system panel? Definitely not there. Nope, that is a, that's a different code, dude. Uh, that is, that's not the code. Look at you guys. I'm a little, I'm a little choked up. Good text watching me talk. I think you guys are amazing. <laughs> I trust IT Litter Joe. She got she got the trusted platform module thing. Well done. Well done. Oh, uh Tolowit because mo money, mo money, mo money. Why does a Microsoft license the Window OS like companies do for applications? So you guys realize that Bill Gates got super rich because he invented a very interesting concept. Bill Gates invented the concept that software costs money. Before Bill Gates, software was copied like crazy. And he put a very famous article on some magazine years ago where he's basically like, you guys need to pay me. And basically invented the concept of licensing software, which didn't happen before that. That's what Bill Gates invented. You really want to talk about it. Thank you, Andre, I'm gonna check my mail. No, I told him, this is just the guys working on making my house much more lit up. I'd love to turn the lights on in here because it, it looks like the white room, you know. This is the construct. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Get a job, absolutely. Bard's Tales for Wind's Cakes, Dan Seneca, absolutely. Man, I love that. I, you know... See, the problem is, is every time I need a CD key, I always would pull these utilities because I got in the habit. And every time I do that, I would, it, it's faster for me to pull down one of these keys from one of these little utilities than it is to research, well, it has been, to research a command line command for it. I got to tell you, that's going to be in the next A plus book, guaranteed. Uh, David Rush, uh, report on Santa's for December 7th. David Rush, I'm sad to say that like so many other amazing social events, the Pearl Harbor Santas has been canceled for 2020. So I will not be putting on my fancy Santa costume and running around in a parking lot pretending like I'm the USS Nevada while people hold their arms out and pretend like they're Japanese torpedo bombers. There will be no Pearl Harbor Santas this year. I know, it's sad. Right. 
Andre de Goyt, that line does not work on my system. Oh yeah, run it with administrator privileges, right? Here guys. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Like this. Right click, Windows PowerShell, admin. Wait a minute, I am not, what am I doing? I like you guys, but I'm not going to pull my Windows CD key. I trust you guys, but remember these videos are saved. I don't want people getting a free Windows CD key. <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm not going to, uh, trust me, it works. All right. Twenty twenty one will be the year we will redo. Uh, yeah, Tolwood, I mean, uh, we got it to work. We'll, we'll, we'll have to research a little bit, make sure what the problem is. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to do that. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Luke Butler, how close was that? That was close. All right, I'll tell you what. Uh, it looks like questions are toning down, and it's, it's 347. Let's do one more competition, okay? And again... You ringers, whoever you think you are as a ringer, if you're willing to hold back for the new folks, uh, always would appreciate that. Look, I'm not going to stop anybody who wants to compete. If you want to compete, compete. Uh, but uh, okay. All right. Uh, so let's do one more, and then we're going to talk about uh, the giveaway for the Security Plus book. All right. Um, I think we didn't. I think pretty sure we did not do this one. So, you guys ready? Here's it, the last one. Okay, remember what the rules are. You cannot type A, B, C, or D. You actually have to type the answer. Everybody ready? Here we go. What component is in charge of powering an LCD screen? What component is in charge of powering an LCD screen? <laughs> No, Eric, the backlight is what lights it, but what powers that? All right, smart Alec Tolowet, I tell you, you're going to be so far. All right, so let's take a look here. And the winner is Alan Duggan. Bye, Audrey's leaving. Bye, Audrey. We'll talk to you later. Audrey, send me a text sometime, boss. Um, Alan, you are the winner. Congratulations to you, Alan. You win your choice of either A+, plus, Net+, plus, or Security+. Plus. Practice questions from Total Seminars. In order to claim your prize, all you have to do is go to Kathy Y at totalsem.com and you will get your choice of either A plus, Net plus, or Security plus. That is 180 day access. Well done. All right. Woo, I think we got everybody covered today. All right, folks. Uh, last chats for questions here. Uh, while I'm waiting for the last questions, do keep in mind um, we are going to have a uh, absolutely Dun, 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 dun. Where'd it go? Where did it go? Remember, we have Dr. Dawn Dunkerley is going to be showing up on Wednesday. She's the writer of the Mike Myers A Plus uh, Security Passport book. That book's already out. It's embarrassing that the passport book's out before the main book, but uh, Dr. Dunkerley, or she's just Dawn. I don't think she's a doctor kind of a thing. Uh, uh, it, it, the book is out, it looks great. Uh, she's done a great job. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, more Security Plus topics. Now, keep in mind, this is really the person to talk to if you want to know what the new Security Plus is going to be like. And I would very much ask you guys to consider having some questions ready for Wednesday. In particular, what's going to be happening on the new Security Plus? You know, she's not going to be able to give you individual answers, but she's certainly comfortable talking about topicality, maybe some of the things you need to zoom in on a little bit more. You don't get resources like this very often, folks, okay? You really need to be taking advantage of that. Uh, you're going to be very, very happy. Um, 
Also, do keep in mind uh, that just because you guys were nice enough to show up today, you get uh, access to hold on. We're giving away free security uh, books today. Uh, all you have to do is you have to buy, you have to buy the A plus, Net plus, or Security plus. And when you buy it, you go to www.totalseb.com, buy one of those three, you use that code, you send the receipt to Kathy Wyatt, totalsem.com with the subject of Mike AMA ebook offer, and she will send you a free Security Plus ebook right to your door. How convenient is that? All right, guys, it looks like we're going to be wrapping up then. Uh, I think we got everything covered. Remember, we, there's a Discord channel. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get on today, but I will be on Wednesday for sure. And uh, we will uh, check that out and have some fun. Burp, 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 burp. Uh, what is my favorite distro, distro of Linux? Ubuntu desktop. I really like it. Uh, I like any distro that will load all my hardware. And that does seem to be the information. Uh, Scott Jernigan, can you throw the uh, Discord info out one more time? DBT Wizard would like to have... Uh, information uh, about the discord scott's going to go ahead and throw that up and as soon as scott throws that up i am going to be out of here there you go fantastic hey folks thank you so much do show up on wednesday uh for dr dawn dunkerley she's going to have an amazing uh conversation you just don't get a chance to talk to people like this very often take advantage of it uh i am out of here i will see you guys on wednesday with dr dawn dunkerley and until then be cool and see you later yeah i'm going to change it bye guys